So tetracycline, everyone, is another kind or another type of um, an antibacterial. Okay, so it's a broad spectrum antibiotics. So it has an action on bacteria and it is originating from a natural source called Streptomyces species. That's why it is also called as antibiotics. Now, the important member of the group, the, they are derivatives on derivatives of an octahydronaphthacine ring. So this is a hydrocarbon system that comprises four unrelated six-membered rings. So from the word tetra, four, and then six-membered rings, so cyclines. That is why it has named as um, tetracycline because of the tet tetracyclic system. Now moving forward to the structure of our tetracycline, they are amphoteric compounds. They can form either salts using acids or bases, and they can crystallize out a aqueous solution of their salts. So they are um, stabilized also by excess acid. So the common HCl salts are used for oral administration. So we have tetracycline, um, hydrochloride, encapsulated. So to mask the bitter taste caused by our, by our drug, the nature of the drug. And also water-insoluble salts are formed when, with divalent and polyvalent metals. So in other words, the tetracyclines are very prone to chelation. With regards to mechanism of action of our tetracycline, it inhibits bacterial protein synthesis. So it is categorized as according to pharmacodynamics of antibacterial as bacteri bacteriostatic. So it inhibits bacterial protein synthesis by binding to the 30S ribosomal unit thus preventing the binding of amino acyl tRNA to the mRNA ribosome complex. Okay, so both the binding of this amino acyl tRNA and the binding of tetracycline at the ribosomal binding site, remember this one, it requires magnesium ion. So there is um, a prerequisite for successful um, inhibition or inhibitory power of our tetracycline. So it requires the magnesium ions to proceed with bacterial protein synthesis inhibition. So our tetracyclines, they enter bacterial cells using two processes, by passive diffusion and active transport. So it, it also invo involves active transport because of the nature of the structure. It is four unrelated six-membered rings, so that is a bulky structure. That is why it needs extra ATP or energy to get inside bacterial cells. Now, with regards to mechanism of resistance, so bacteria and pathogens have also discovered or developed resistance or barriers against the, the protein inhibition property of tetracycline. So they have developed three mechanisms of resistance. The first one is they can efflux mediate they can efflux um intracellular tetracycline concentration. They have ability to paalisin yung mga nakapasok na, na tetracycline sa loob ng cell nila, thereby reducing the intracellular tetracycline concentration inside the bacterial cell. So that's one, that's the first mechanism of resistance. The second is the ribosomal protection in which the bacterial protein synthesis apparatus is rendered resistant to the action of the tetracycline using inducible cytoplasmic protein. So as, as I have mentioned, the tetracycline acts on 30S ribosome. So one way of resisting tetracycline, bacteria or pathogens has, have developed ribosomal protection to 
to protect them from the from the property of tetracycline. <clears throat> the third one is enzymatic oxidation. This is mediated by plasmid or chromosomal and ribosomal protection. So these are the most frequently encountered and most clinically significant resistant resistance mechanism for tetracycline. So the enzymatic oxidation, it will um, the bacteria will produce an enzyme. The same with our in the case of beta lactamases and with the transferases for for amino glycosides. So for tetracycline, they also have developed an enzyme against tetracycline, which can oxidize our drug or the structure. Therefore, there would be resistance against um, tetracycline due to inactivation of the drug. Now, with regards to the spectrum of activity, they are considered the most or the broadest spectrum of activity of any known antibacterial agents. So their bacteriostatic action is a disadvantage in the treatment of life-threatening infections. We have to emphasize that using tetracycline in serious, severe, life-threatening infection is not um, clinically helpful for our, for our patients. Okay, so parenteral tetracyclines may cause severe liver damage when given in excessive dosage, most especially to pregnant or, on, or to patients with impaired renal failure. <clears throat> now let's move into detail about the structure activity relationship of our tetracycline. So all derivatives with fewer than four rings are inactive. So it really have to possess four rings for it to have an antibacterial property. So the simplest tetracycline is called 6-dimethyl-6-deoxy-tetracycline. So the, the integrity of substituents at carbon atoms 1, 2, 3, 4, 10, 11, 11A, and 12, representing the hydrophilic southern eastern phases of the molecule these are the points where our um, substitution may may occur later on so remember the simplest tetracycline is this one so a ring substituents can be modified only slightly without dramatic loss of potency so our tetracycline is referred to as ring a ring b ring c and ring d so it was mentioned here, we can modify ring A only slightly. With, uh, we, can, we can modify it slightly and it will not lose it, its, drama, its antibacterial potency. So the analyzed tricarbonyl methane system at C1 to C3 must be intact for good activity. Okay, so the C1 here, we have number 1, C three that's c3 c1 c2 c3 okay this one c1 c2 and c3 so they are called enolyzed or they have enols so they should be intact for good activity meaning to say that you should not touch c1 c2 and c3 to promote or to preserve the antibacterial property now, replacement of the amide at C2 with other functions, for example, aldehyde or nitrile, reduces or abolishes activity. So, based on this statement, number two, wag na nating pakialaman si C1, si C2, and si C3. Pag pinakailaman natin si C2 at nilagyan natin siya dito, ng, dito most especially ng aldehyde, it will abolish activity it will have an abolished or decreased activity. De decreased activity. But this one, meron silang nilagay, meron nalagay dito na um, substituent, but although this is a um, new one, it is not an aldehyde. Okay. Monoalkylation of the amide nitrogen 
reduces activity proportionately to the size of the alkyl group. And then, we have yan, monoalkylation. So, dapat yung ating pagdagdag ng mga alkyl groups, it will be um, favorably, will be limited to addition of methyl. Okay? So, monoalkylation. Amino alkylation of the amide group allows water solubility. So when you say amino alkylation, that would be an amine with hydrocarbon, such as this one and this one. Okay? This one, this part, the amine with the hydrocarbon. The amine. Okay, this one is just an amine. So this amino amino alkyl or amino alkylation allows water solubility now if polar substituents for example our hydroxyl is added at c5 and c6 because they are polar obviously they decrease lipid they de they decrease lipid solubility and allow more water solubility of tetracycline. So if we have to see here C5 and C6, C6 ba yun? Okay, C5, here C5 and C6, kung lagyan daw natin dyan ng hydroxyl, which is a polar substance, it further promotes water solubility. And that is favorable if we will make or we want our tetracycline to be um, um, readily excretable and be prepared in oral oral dosage form. So this one is the, the specific structure. This is called as 6-methyl 4-amino 3-6-10-12-12-A pentahydroxy 144A, 55A, 611A, octahydro 2 naphthacine carboxamide. So that's a very complicated name. That's just tetracycline. Okay? So we have ring A, ring B, ring C, and ring D. We have different PKA for the um, functional groups present. So the PKA of OH with carbonyl and another OH is 7. And the PKA for um, this part here, because it's much um, acidic, this is um, a basic, this is PKA of 3. Oh, no, it's acidic, PKA of 3. And then this one here is basic, PKA of 9.5. So more or less, they will, um, they will um, balance each other. So our tetracycline is very amphoteric in nature.